Hey, so this is a new beekeeping season starting. Um, what I seen yesterday was good. I went through, looked through about 20 and I just peeked. On you know, most of them, except for one, I put a pollen patty on. I was just peeking and seeing what was going on, and uh, I only found one out of about 20 that I opened that were dead. Now, I know that's not reality, I gotta go through all my hives. Um, anyway, um, this year I'm just I'm hoping to make more videos because, uh, I'm hoping it helps people. I don't know, but um, I don't ever plan on making any money from YouTube. I just want to try and help people and, and show them what I go through and maybe see if uh, I can help them help somebody else out, right? So um, anyways, if... Uh, if you do, if you subscribe to this channel and then uh, like it, it'll help other people find it, and hopefully they can get something out of it. But I, I have no idea. But um, and I don't know. I don't think I'm that great of a teacher on a video. But you know, I just show you what I'm doing. So uh, I'm gonna go through this yard. This is my first yard of the day. I'm hoping to get through most of my bees. I'm just opening them up, putting a pollen patty on. Uh, if they're too weak, I'm not just putting a pollen patty on. I'm actually going to take them out and put them into one of my mating boxes. Um, I use three frame deep mating boxes. And I'll put them in there so it's easier for them to keep the void warm because if you don't have many bees and they're just a little wee handful of bees in there they're probably not going to survive they may not even survive in my mating uh my mating boxes but um at least it'll give them a better chance okay so um and then i'm going to leave them in there and just let them do their thing until uh my first queen's my first queen cells come out and need a place to go and then i'll go and and see where they're at i'll probably pull the queen out at that point put her in a cage and then uh i'll install a, a cell and that'll be the starting of my mating nukes and then hopefully i'll have a few hives that i can even just split down into a like a five frame or six frame hive and and add a queen just sort of go at this stuff as as it happens right like um i can't have a plan because i don't know what i have um so I'll, I'll have a better plan um as i go through them and today i'll like if i see something that's good and strong i'll put a brick on its edge on top of it just to tell me that i need to do something with that hive uh, in the near future and whatever that is maybe I'll just steal some bees and give it to a weak one or something right so but that's what I'm doing today I'm starting in the worst yard probably of the bunch um, this yard has been I believe it's been devastated by skunks uh, I had a buddy of mine we were on the east coast uh, for the winter in the southern southern end of the east coast uh where like all winter we only had like five days of snow on the ground at all so that was fantastic when you're getting older and your bones hurt <laughs> you look for spots that are a little warmer <laughs> and uh anyways it was fun going out there missed our family but we're back up here with the family again and uh We'll be here again until fall, and then we'll take on another adventure. I think we're just going to sell the house out there that we renovated. Um, I think mainly because our grandkids are here, and our kids are here. So it's 
just a beautiful place to visit. And maybe even if we don't sell the house, we'll just go back there next year and, and spend the winter and enjoy it. Um, but anyway, anybody want a house on the East Coast, south end of the East Coast, Port Latour? Um, beautiful spot out there and uh, it's up for sale. So um, anyway, I'm going to... We're going to be around here. I'm still doing bees. There's been rumors going around just because we quit selling equipment. Um, people are going on, oh, you're getting out of the business. No, I'm not. I'm doing queens and nukes. Um, I'm going to concentrate more on just doing the queens and the nukes. And then when that's over, I'm putting boxes on them. I'm going to my houseboat. I'm going fishing. Um, like I said, as you get older, you look for ways to <laughs> help yourself out when it comes to your joints and your body pains and stuff like that. Well, that's what we're doing, and we're going to try and enjoy life um, and help our kids out with whatever we can. But uh, anyway, um, I, I found that when a, the, my buddy Renus storing, shout out to Renus uh, for helping me out this winter. Um, He came out here and he did a video and he was saying, there's so many bees here, I got to get out of the yard. I'm going to get stung. So <laughs> I just laughed at that because I thought that was fantastic in the middle of winter. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so what, what, when he was doing that, he maybe didn't notice as much as I did because he's just been doing it for a couple years, but the whole yard was packed down with skunk track. So... Um, I brought something to help with that, and I'm also going to go through these hives, and I have a feeling there'll be lots of weak ones here, because those skunks had to eat, and they had to eat the things that I have in these boxes, and uh, I guess they're probably nice and healthy, but my boxes are going to be hurting, I have a feeling. Uh, Anyways, I'm going to put on pollen patties on the way back from Nova Scotia. We stopped at a place, a bee supply, and picked up a bunch of global patties. Um, they're pound and a half patties instead of just uh, instead of just the one pound patties. So I might rip some of them in half if the hive's weak, or I'll be cutting them in like one third to put on my mating boxes that I put the weak hives into. I hope I don't need to make too many of those. I'm not looking forward to those at all but I'll show you what they I'll show you what it looks like I got one right here so here's what my mating nukes look like I got three sections uh, each one of them holds three frames so this one I've left out in the yard all winter but anyway I scraped it out Hoping to get the the canvas uh, dried out a bit before I have to put any bees in them. I'll probably go through the whole yard and I'll mark the weak ones. So what I might do is I'll take a I I have these little paving stones on top of all my hives, right? So they're laying like this. Uh, if they're weak. Maybe I'll put one like this, then put another one on its edge on top. That tells me they're weak. I'll deal with them today or tomorrow or within this week anyway. Um, if they're just, if they're a strong hive, I might just set her up on one brick up on its side or something like that. That just lets me know where like that they're doing good. Anyway, so I'm just gonna. I just popped a box there and there was I don't even know if there's a handful of bees it's probably not even worth trying but I'm going to put it in one of these boxes right so I'll put a, a frame of honey a frame that the most of the bees are on right now and I'll make sure there's enough room in there for the queen to lay if she's going to lay and I'll probably come back in a little while yeah in the next uh, in the next few days and and or the next week sometime and open them up 
if they're still alive, I'll pitch some more bees in them. Uh, take a frame out of something else. So then I'll take the bees and I'll move them to one side, put a blank frame in between, and then put another frame with bees from another hive on the opposite side. Just so that they're not hitting the queen right at the at the just so they're not like on the queen as soon as I put them in the box. They have to cross that empty frame, which is nothing for them, right? Um, but I just I just feel as though um, that's probably a better idea. It's instead of having a queen and just throwing a bunch of <laughs> uh, bees out of another hive on her, um, you know. They have to move to get to her and they're pretty accepting this time of year anyway um as long as they're alive they seem to be happy <laughs> uh what else i'll be doing is uh i'll be if i get something that's maybe four frames or something like a decent not great um i'll put a piece of newspaper on top of a stronger hive and then i'll put a queen excluder on top of that and then i'll put the weaker hive on top of that and what that does is um eventually the the bees from the lower box will eat through the newspaper they will actually get used to both queens and they will start working both queens as long as it's, as long as the queens can't get to each other you're usually pretty good sometimes you lose one of the queens or something in a situation like that which is okay then you just pull the queen excluder right they all mesh together um, and then if they get strong you can split them again and put a queen in later um, or you can split them up I'm gonna have to be a couple weeks I'll have to be shaking bees uh, into a box for uh, for grafting into so you know, you come to a whole yard like this, so I think there's about 30 here. Uh, so you come to a yard like this, and you just set up a box in the center, and you just go and you just shake bees into it. Okay, and then uh, I usually do that, and then I move them to another yard, and I graft into them. Um, and they pull down queen cells, and... I'll usually graft into them three or four times, probably. Uh, every time I go to do it, I'll shake more bees into it. Uh, and ho and once the bees start hatching out, like, uh, first of May in that area, you should start to be having some bees hatching out, hopefully in the stronger hives. And you can shake then young bees into your, uh, into the hive that you're grafting into. So, um, that's that's a couple weeks down the road right now i'm just actually looking to see if anything's alive be quite happy there's one the actually the box that the the camera's sitting on right now it's the one that has uh my great grandfather's box underneath it which is a totally different type of box but you're able to just uh put a regular length drop on top um then they fit so uh but i'd like to see it populated it's pretty cool to have just even though no one comes here and sees any of it um but just for me when i come to this yard and i see that box i just think that's pretty freaking cool you know that i have my great grandfather's stuff uh that i have my own bees in and then i'll just uh on top of that box because they're great big deep frames um actually i have one of them over here because one was a little bit unsuccessful last year they just weren't they just didn't have enough uh, bees in it to have that box on so anyway I'll show you it here um, if I can get you set up without you crashing on the ground um, Okay, so I'll just maybe extend that a little. So these frames are quite large. So like that's the depth of the 
frame in his boxes. I'll grab one of these here. This is a regular Langstroth deep frame. Okay. This is the one in the box. It's from my great grandfather. You see the difference in height. So I think this this little bit of difference in height is pretty cool, and I think that they would probably go through in a single really good because there's lots of room for bees in it, right? Um, I actually put that one in. It has one of these boxes plus a deep because it was unpopulated, and then I thought, well, I'll just um, populate it, but it was too late in the year, and I didn't want to separate them back back off or, or anything but you see my dad put these together and so it was like how do you do this because I don't know where you could buy the foundation for it but what he did was he put a plastic foundation in and then he cut another plastic foundation and he put it at the bottom um, and he put a wire in because it would flex too much so put a wire in so that it would it would help to hold the plastic in place because they are pretty floppy um, because of the width of them. But anyway, not sure why that's not going back in there. There we go. But anyways, I hope to populate this one again because they're like I say, just cool to have. Um, interesting. So. I'm just, just going to go and pop a box here. I'll put you on my mating box, I guess. You just open those first ones, first corner. First corner of the bee yard. And you got to watch when you're in a bee yard and you have an electric fence around it because you see how close my ass is to this wire? <laughs> if you see me jump, you'll know why. Anyways, I don't see any bees going in and out of this one, so that's not a good sign. But there's a handful. And I don't know how much is underneath underneath the uh, the sugar. They're into the sugar, even though like I can I can see in this one frame here. Oops. You can see in this one frame here, it still has capped honey. And so does the next one over. So there's lots of honey in here. So I'll put a brick on here telling me this one's weak. This one should... Well, there's a couple frames of bees there. That one should go into a mating box. Either that or um, either into a mating box or on top of another stronger hive. But it's not as good as the one I saw yesterday. And the one I saw yesterday I didn't think should survive. And actually I think this is one I probably thought wouldn't survive as well. And they're still here. But like I say, I expect to see this a lot in this yard because uh, there's been a skunk here, constant. And uh, so they're going to be weak. This is the one that's got, I think, one deep box. One deep box, and then a deep, deep. My great-grandfather's box underneath that. So I'll maybe try and get you closer here. Put you on this other box. Um, it doesn't fall over. That wouldn't be good. This 
one I think might be a little better. This one, freaking awesome. The skunk didn't get at it too much. We got lots of bees in there. And down there, loaded with bees. Now, this one has a different problem. This one I'm going to be looking in, see if it's got any honey. Maybe should put my lid up. You can see that? Yep, yeah, you can see that, eh? Cool. I'm gonna set this down over here. I'm gonna put up my hood. I didn't expect this any in this one. And we'll just start on the outside where the bees aren't sitting. And that one's got, see this one's the outside one, so it's a little sometimes, you know, you open them up in the spring, the outside frame, you look in it, it's got moisture in it, but that moisture could be, moisture, could be water, so sometimes I'll just take it, give it a shake like that, the liquid comes out, then it's, uh, not nectar it's actually water and this stuff stayed in so it must be good set that one against the hive pull the next one out that's got some capped honey that's a good good thing I'm gonna keep going here not that warm but I'm It is, I think, about 8 degrees or something like that out. So, whoop. Another one. There's capped honey on that. Holy cap. I used to just dig my hive tool into that, take a taste, but doctor tells me I'm borderline diabetic, so I gotta be good. <laughs> I'm just gonna be looking in some of these. See if I can see any eggs or larvae in it. I don't know if they're started yet or not. Also looking for a queen in here. Pretty sure if there's no queen, there's going to be no eggs or anything. <laughs> but I think there's probably a queen in here somewhere. If I can find her, I don't know, because that top box is sure full of bees. She could be up there. Oh, no, there she is. Got a queen right here. <laughs> She's white. How old is that? Last year it was yellow, I think. This one's got a white dot. But, oh, I just got my first sting. Look at that. Isn't that glorious? Right in the, on my hand. Feels good. <laughs> Thank you.
I see eggs, folks. We got eggs. We got eggs. Nice. See what's on this side. Oh, same queen. This side is nothing. She's just barely started. She's just barely starting. I don't know if I can get a picture over here. I don't know if you can see her or not. I can't see what my camera's seeing right now. Cause there she is right there. She's got a... Her dot's just about eight off. She'll do. Got a hive like this. Makes me happy. So that one frame has eggs on it. Um, that queen must be three years old. I think last year was yellow. The year before that was blue. Got a couple pens in my pocket. Green, I know, is older. Green must be, white must be in between green and blue somewhere. I figure. I have to look it up every time. I can never friggin' remember. Anyway. Anyway, they have lots of food in there. Quite happy with this the amount of food in here. And we'll give them a pollen patty. So when you put these pollen patties on, you've got holes on the one side and nothing on the other. Put it with the holes down. Then they can access it from the frames, right? I just brush them a little bit with it. They don't seem to get too cranky about it because, uh, well, you're brushing them with food. What can you say? They like food. They spend their whole life trying to get food. So, they don't get too pissed off at you. There's a patty for them. Now, put all these girls back on. All these. Quite a few bees in here. Whoa! Some of them fell off. You give that a little twist as you put it on and knock the bees off. Then, of course, they won't go back to the hole when you want them to. They're going, hey, shit, haven't, they haven't been able to be sunbathing for quite a while now so anyway those girls are done they make me happy got eggs eggs are a good start really like to see a whole bunch of brood in there though and this one i didn't even take care of that great it only had one inch of the styrofoam on it Anyway, this must have been a fantastic winter here. We were gone trying to find a place without snow and ice. And, and then it looks like you guys had the friggin' nicest, nicest year in, in years. Because the way the bees I've seen so far are coming through, it's quite exciting. Anyway. I'm going to keep going through this yard and see what I find. I should. That was a good one, so I better go back. I showed you a shitty one first, and then a good one. I know this one's a shitty one because I just popped it when I came in, out here. This one's going to go into a mating box. Now you see? That's all the bees I can see. There's only a handful. 
We'll go into a mate. I'll make sure there's a queen in there. We'll go into a mating box. Then probably in a few days I'll be back. And if they're still alive, I'll put some more bees in them. But like I say, this yard has been devastated. Devastated by uh, what do you call it? The skunks. So I got this here too. It's uh, six five frame nukes. When I put something like that in the winter, I don't expect to survive. Okay, I've never put nukes in the winter. I don't think ever. Maybe I have. This year I put about 20 in. Just got too late to add them together. So it's like, so am I going to put these in in a full size hive or what am I doing? And uh, anyway. I decided I had these boxes kicking around, so I'd give them a try. And I sure have the sucker taped up. No windstorm was taking this off, that's for sure. Honestly surprised at how little of snow there is. I, I usually drag a sleigh across here in my snowshoes. And... All the way across here, it's uh, it's grass. But I came to this one first because I knew I me needed those mating loop boxes. So anyway, unwrapping this, just gonna check it out, see if there's anything alive. Um. If I can get a hold of the fold of tape, I fold the edges of the tape so I'm able to get a hold of something. Either that or I gotta cut it with a knife, right? So I'll just take a quick peek in these. I don't think, I don't expect anything from them. So it's always good when you don't expect anything. There won't, no possible way of getting disappointed. Oh, oh, look at that one. That one's got some in it. That one's got some in it. Son of a bitch, you're not happy. I just got stung right on the forehead. Oh, yeah, baby. Love these girls. Miss them so much. Being stung by a bee is sort of like getting a kiss. There's a dead one. Knew that would happen. One of these would be dead. It only looks like there's hardly any bees were in there. Another dead one. But you could see you could see by my friend's video, my Renus's video, that these bees the uh, skunks have been at them pretty good. Like on the ground here, that's all the entrance reducers. Every one of those hives had the entrance reducer taken out. So, like, that one's not alive. And I don't think this end one will be alive either, to be honest. But. Take this lid right out. Take this hive out. Shit. This is hard to do. Yo, one hand beekeeper. Old one hand beekeeping tricks. Doesn't work very good when you're a beekeeper. Oh, sorry for swinging you around like that. 
squirrels are dead. A lot of bees in there, but they seem to be dead. Anyway, two out of six. If they would have all ended up in full-size box, it would have been zero out of six. So, happy with that. But what this was, was you set up your hives. So, you set up your hives in the fall. Okay? You're in the end of September. End of September to, you know, middle of October. That's when you're looking at them going, oh, it's not strong enough, I need to add it to something. Okay? So, that's when you add them some. If you look at them and they look, well, shit, that doesn't look bad. Then you leave them. Then you come back in the middle of November. And they're like two, three frames of bees. Well, it's pretty late to add them together. Adding them together is probably going to be a problem. Okay? So... If you add them together, it, there could be a reason for it. There could be failing queens. So which queen do you use? Okay. Could be a uh, high mite count, which I doubt. I'm pretty ahead of that usually. Um, so it could be that. And so you go adding it to another hive that doesn't have a high mic count, you're just totally burning yourself, right? So almost better to shake them out. But instead, I went around this yard. As you can see behind me here, there's pallets with nothing on them. Well, that's because they had weak hives on them, okay? So... I picked them up, shoved them in those boxes. I thought, I'm going to give this a try. I know people, I, I, there's a guy not not even five miles from here. Um, lives at the south end of Berks Falls. And uh, he puts um, nukes in the winter. He puts like 20 some nukes in the winter. Loses one. Okay. They're probably storming strong, like he's probably intentionally putting nukes in the winter. Okay. I'm not intentionally putting nukes in the winter. I'm putting bees in the winter in nuke boxes because they're not in good enough shape in the fall to make it in a big box. <laughs> so, uh, I know there will be tons of people out there that criticize the way I do beekeeping. I don't really care. <laughs> I do me. You do you. If you don't like the way I do it, do it your way. That's what I say. And if, if your bees survive, fantastic. You did it right. Even if someone else says you did it wrong. <laughs> uh, anyways, I'm going to carry on here and keep going through them and and uh, that's my first video for this year. We'll just uh, see how this year goes. And I'm thinking I'm going to have decent luck because most boxes I open have something in them. Even if they have that little wee handful like that one there. Um, little wee handful of bees. I, I, this time of year, I never blame the queen, okay? <laughs> it's like too early to blame, blame queens, right? Um, so what I'll do is I'll put them in a mating box. Might try and add some bees to them. If, they ex if she's accepted by them and, and they carry on, then she puts a little bit of brood in the, in the mating nuke. That's good. That's what ho holds the bees there, right? So if there's brood in the box, those bees aren't going to screw off and go somewhere else. They're going to keep coming back because they're 
well, they're probably thinking they're going to make a queen or something, right? But I'm putting a queen in there that's going to pop before theirs even gets drawn out. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, they're benefiting me by populating my mating boxes. And uh, then they, if, if that queen, you know, in the mating box, if I look in the mating box and there's brood in there, I'm going to take her out. There's going to be something strong in my yard that I can take a bunch of bees out of. Maybe just even if I can put a four frame nuke together, put her in the box and then uh, just let them grow. Take them, you know, a month to get into a full single, but it's, it's, it's not killing the queen. You know, I could just go around all my mating boxes after the after they've been in them for a while and just kill all the queens because their last year's queens or two years that one over there was what three years old so they can just go around and kill them and then put a new cell in and they can start producing queens for me and she can use their population to be able to survive and go out and mate and stuff so um anyways this is just what I do. Not uh, everybody doesn't do the same thing. Nobody's wrong. Okay. If you hear somebody criticize another beekeepers, um, I don't think you should do that. I think everybody has their own brain. They can figure things out on their own. And uh, if you think you have a good idea, give it a try. If you come to me and I foo foo it, please walk away because I don't have I don't have the time for uh, doing silly things because I'm doing this for a living. I'm not doing this uh, as a hobby. I'm not doing this to make money or I'm not doing this to make honey. I'm doing it to make money. Problem is, last year I didn't make any, so that's why I'm doing renovations which isn't my favorite thing <laughs> for too many years <laughs> <But> anyway <laughs> uh, anyway um, so this year looks like it's going to be a good year and I hope it will and I hope I'll have more time to do things like this just sit down and make a video and anybody that needs help or whatever just message Send me a message, or if you have a question about what's on the video, ask a question. I'll answer your question. Um, well, most of the time. If you go ask me a lot about the flow hive, I will probably flip. No, I, I wouldn't. I'd like to try one, but I'm not in no hurry to, I'll tell you that. Um, can't see putting them all in everything plastic making sense but whatever uh, yeah I won't go off about the flow hive but anyway um, I think those styrofoam hives would be pretty cool that place uh, in in Nova Scotia wish I could remember the name of it um, a nice little beekeeping store uh, but they had a lot of the styrofoam hives there and they weren't super expensive like usually they're twice as much as this wooden ware so like a six frame nuke in styrofoam was 65 bucks basically uh, i think those five frame nukes like over there i think they're like 35 bucks so you never have to wrap them um they just seem like a cool idea, but I just asked the guy, like, how do they stand up to a hive tool? Like, can't see prying the boxes apart and then holding up. And he was showing me, and he says, yeah, I, I run everything in. He says, you know how many hives I've lost over the last five years? I've lost five hives over the last five years. And being a beekeeping store, I thought he might have had a lot, but I think he only has between 15 and 20 hives or something like that. But um, still, that's pretty good. 
Um, last year he lost one. This year he lost none. And out there, it's like, it's like where he was, there was maybe an inch of snow on the ground. Like there wasn't a lot. Like down where we were, like I say, there was only five days all winter, snow on the ground. Like it was exciting. <laughs> I wish I could have took my bees out there. <laughs> I'd still be there right now, and I'd probably start. Uh, maybe be able to start doing some grafting get a little bit ahead of ahead of schedule right but um anyway this will uh like i say looks like a good start and that's a, i think that's a long oh shit 45 freaking minutes that's a long enough video i hope somebody watches it probably no one will because it's too freaking long <laughs> let's talk to you later